On today's show, Tesla to provide a significant upgrade to Sentry Mode, a foldable electric car, and let's talk about hydrogen fuel cell vehicles and why they might be a thing. Good day and welcome. And today's first story is about a foldable car. Tell me, is this a gimmick or something that you can see being a true, like worthwhile endeavor? The City Transformer is described as the world's first ultra compact electric vehicle for smart cities. That is not only small, but also foldable. At its widest stance, it's 1.4 meters wide, and when it shrinks, it's only one meter. Doing so, however, means that you actually drop its top speed from 90 k's per hour down to 40 kilometers per hour, which I think is probably for stability reasons. I'm not terribly sure, sorry. Range is a respectable 180 kilometers. Pretty sprightly from a zero to 50 kilometer hour time in five seconds. Now, the Israeli company behind this actually suggests that for them, the first application is going to be for um, uh, ambulance, and, yeah, an ambulance sort of service. Um, and I've seen similar things in Australia, but it's like a trike style motorbike with the two wheels at the front and the one at the back. Uh, I once pulled up beside them um, on my bike and I was like, oh, that's interesting. I didn't know you guys did that. And the idea being that they can just, you know, weed through traffic quite easily. But I think at a one meter width, that's still a bit wide, seriously. Like the bars on most motorbikes are only about 60 to 70 centimeters wide. So when you're filtering through traffic, that's dead easy on them, but something like that's one meter, I don't know. This video makes it look achievable, but that's a very wide gap, folks. It really, really is. But hey, there's other applications here, right? You could do car sharing. Yeah, you could do car sharing. Parking will be a heck of a lot easier. Oh my gosh. Uh, you think most cars lengthwise, four, four and a half meters at least. Uh, Widthwise, a few meters across. This is like only one, only one. So I get that, tick for that. Especially as the door looks like it actually hinges and it goes up and down in the vertical, it doesn't open out sideways like, you know, you know, like wings. Yeah, I look like a chicken when I do that. <laughs> I'm looking at myself down the video there and I can see that. Mm, don't you comment, Ray, stop it. Anyway. Um, so interestingly, the Israeli company behind this site that look, when looking for parking spaces is a big deal. And in, in countries, in countries, in cities like New York and uh, Paris, over there, citizens spend more than 230 hours a year searching for a parking space. If you ask my dad, it's because there's no parking in cities. <laughs> Hi, Dad. Anyway, um, but nonetheless, if everyone had little tiny vehicles like this, uh, could you transport other people? No. Um, is it a thing that people would feel safe in? No. Uh, does it have an application? Yeah, but it's very bespoke. It, it really is. Um, I'd like to know your thoughts. Put them down below. Ah, uh, hydrogen, my <laughs> much loved NEG source. And I say that with absolute irony, by the way. Um, look, Hydrogen will most likely fuel long distance transport solutions like trains, planes, long haul trucks. So I'm proud to say that an Australian company, Pure Hydrogen, has made an equity deal with H2H Global that will see both Australian companies roll out a series of hydrogen utes, trucks and buses. The agreement will mean that Pure Hydrogen will create a new company named Pure X Mobility and make, in Australia, buses and trucks. In this article by Joshua Hill on The Driven, he quotes Scott Brown from Pure Hydrogen who said that the efficiency provided by hydrogen in new automotive technology is a game changer for the industry. Hydrogen has the potential to cut fuel costs by up to 30% when compared with traditional diesel. Yes, it can, but only if done so from like renewable power, which is like the creation of hydrogen fuel through electrolysis. Yeah. Now this, you know, renewable version of hydrogen fuel is called green hydrogen. And I shared a story earlier this week with my patrons about it, where Malcolm Turnbull spoke about, spoke about it at the Energy Climate Council stuff in Australia just this last week. Very awesome uh, keynote speech, by the way. Um, I'll, I'll leave a link to it below. Have a look. It's really good. Uh, he's very much apolitical. He has to go at both sides of politics, but it's more around how the fossil fuel industry is trying to sell up 
blue hydrogen, which is to say the creation of hydrogen from gas and other fossil fuel sources, and it's dirty, dirty, dirty. And no matter of net zero, nothing can really offset the fugitive emissions that are created by making hydrogen in that fashion. It's bad, bad, bad. Anyway, I'm getting a bit off topic, so if you want to know more about hydrogen and why it's good and bad, please do go check out this video. I think we all need to be cautiously optimistic about hydrogen because like as a fuel right now, uh, well let's actually, let's talk about petrol prices in Australia and around the world actually, they're crazy expensive and hydrogen is also crazy expensive. Arena, our Australian renewable energy uh, agency, says that renewable hydrogen today costs between six to nine dollars per kilogram to produce and that achieving a two dollar per kilogram stretch goal set by the Australian government's low emissions technology statement will require significant reductions in the cost of both hydrogen electrolyzers and electricity from renewable sources. And so how far does that one kilogram of hydrogen get you? In a Toyota Mirai, that it does it about well 3.6 liters per 100 kilometers. So that's either $7.20 per 100 kilometers, or worst case scenario, $32.40 per 100 kilometers. That is very expensive, especially when compared to like my electric vehicle out there, which well I can fill it for free from the sun. Thank you very much. But if I was to pay for electricity from the grid. I could do the same 100 kilometers for as little as $4, including the daily utility charge folks. So remind me again why people think hydrogen is the uh, future fuel. Angus, any suggestions mate? No? Okay. Just checking in my buddy there. Getting back to the story, H2X Global will soon be launching the Warrego Ute in November. Priced from $189,000 for the Warrego 66, this very American looking Ute cabin four wheel drive has a 200 kilowatt motor and optional 90 kilowatt fuel cell system delivering between 60 kilowatts and 100 kilowatts of output from its energy storage systems. He is hoping that they can address the hydrogen fuel price and well, availability because there's the other big issue, but again, let's not get on with that. Congratulations New South Wales, your government has passed its $490 million electric vehicle legislation package, meaning that consumers can be helped into electric vehicles and therefore reduce emissions, improve communities through better health and quieter streets, and more. Just watch out for that nasty EV road user tax that we've got in Victoria. And whilst I'm on that subject, look, I'm still waiting to hear from the High Court, where my lawyers are, um, around our High Court challenge of the electric vehicle tax in Victoria, which has been dubbed the world's worst tax, or the clean air tax. I don't mind whichever way you want to term it, but nonetheless, we're waiting here on a High Court, um, on the High Court to give us a hearing date, most likely, hopefully, not in next year sometime. But a big thank you, I want to say a big thank you to the 579 supporters so far who have contributed more than $42,000 towards our legal fund. Um, I sincerely do thank you for that, and if you can uh, share this video with friends and family, talk about it with them, make sure they understand why it is the world's worst tax, the benefits of electric vehicles, and how they can actually decarbonize our world. Nonetheless, I'll keep you posted on this. But getting back to the story, that's been a theme for today, hasn't it? It definitely has. Um, New South Wales legislation that's just been passed now makes it actually the state in the whole of Australia to have the best incentives to get an electric vehicle. Drivers who have registered for a new eligible EV after September 1, 2021 can apply for a refund of their stamp duty and one of 25,000 rebates worth $3,000. Applications will open on November 1 and also from that same day, eligible vehicles will be able to use transit T2 and T3 lanes until at least the 31st of October, 2022. So, man, a lot of numbers today, isn't it? That would be awesome. That, that makes traveling like in an EV even easier. And people will be looking on, they're going, how come that car's there? How, why is that car doing that? I reckon people are gonna actually start getting behind these and uh, they'll travel in the transit lane in their ice cars. What do you, what do you bet? I bet you a bazillion dollars that's gonna happen. Uh, hopefully the police actually police it because then they'll be educating at the same time. They're like, well, that guy can do it. You can't do it. He can do it because he's actually an electric vehicle. 
Uh, so yeah, awesome stuff. Now, there's also some stuff in this legislation around charges, uh, highway, and you know, the, the super highway sort of stuff, you know, building out fast charges, helping businesses move over um, to electrifying their fleet, training, education, and more. It's actually a very well done package, $490 million for memory, and it's awesome. Now, the incentives will mean that if you were to go buy now a Tesla Model 3 Standard Range Plus, it won't cost you $64,000 drive away, no. You'll actually make it $59,487. Great. Okay, let me just, hey, hey, honey, we're going to move to New South Wales. If you enjoyed the content, please do consider subscribing. It's absolutely free and it really does help the channel. It opens the doors for me as companies will go, wow, you've got 8,000 subscribers and you get this many views. Great. We'll actually uh, link you up and give you a little bit of a driving out electric vehicle or maybe send you a review unit to review, things like that. Um, so please, yeah, do subscribe. I can't stress it enough. But if you want to see more content like this, and someone's you know, over on Patreon, which I'm about to plug right now, get about three or four stories per week where you might only see one. And they get exclusive access to like behind the scenes, news, stuff that I really cannot show you here on Patreon. So if you want to go check it out and support me from as little as $2.50 per month, that's like 60 cents per week, yeah, join us on Patreon. I want to say a big thank you to all my Patrons, in particular my producers, Adam Tyson, Alan Burnt, Ashley Hill, Bruce Hall, Chaotic Media Technology, David Larnham, MN ICT Specialist, Nigel Farrier, and Tesla in the goal. Okay, for my last story today, and it's concerning Tesla Sentry Mode. And hey, Tesla drivers, listen up, because Elon has tweeted, and he suggested that it will soon be able to do live view footage from your car's Sentry Mode. That is awesome stuff, meaning that essentially, if you have a sentry mode moment, that is to say someone walks in front of the cameras and you know, flashes a light, turns the screen on, and says, warning, you've been recorded. You can get a load on your phone, open the Tesla app, and you can get a live feed of what's going on around the car. Now, this is most welcome because to date, there's been people who well, don't have the IT skills to do even like wireless transfer of the files, the recordings that are actually on your Tesla. Uh, so this is, Definitely next level. Now, the interesting little caveat here might be or an observation by Brody Schmidt, who on the Driven notes that for Australian drivers, this particular feature may not be available as there is no AVAS laws in place here and that Tesla does not ship its electric vehicles with an exterior speaker built in. Well, does it? Hang on a second. I can't see one. Maybe on the California ones, but definitely not the made in China ones. All right, well, thanks very much to Shane for allowing me to actually jump under his uh, Tesla Model 3. That's a 2021 model, so it's made in uh, Shanghai Giga. And uh, look, anyone who's actually got a 2020 or prior version in Australia, you know, the made in California ones, uh, put below, does your uh, Tesla actually have uh, the speaker? I know that not not turned on, and I know there's no you know uh, option in the software in Australia for it, but it could be turned on if the laws are changed. I know there's a law thing; it doesn't seem like there's a law around that. I wonder. Put your thoughts below. Love to hear from you. Well, that'll do it for today's episode, and I do hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, subscribe. Consider supporting me over here on Patreon, but otherwise, you be good and you be green. Bye.